Goedemorgen, hello, and I greet you in the awesome name of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome to our 28th mnemonic in internal medicine. This time we're breaking down prognosis and complications of our beloved aortic stenosis. You know, we are referring to the heart here in a physiological and anatomical context. But did you know that the heart is also quite significant in the Bible? The book of Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 admonishes us by saying, Above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. The heart encompasses the totality of one's intellect, emotion, and volition. Out of it flow the issues of life, and I pray that we will guard it with all diligence. Uh, what about the lungs? Did you know that there are many words for the lungs? I just can't remember them all because I have bad lung term memory. <laughs> and what do you call medicine that you give to pigs? You call it oinkment. <laughs> So, everyone, you know that aortic stenosis basically can be substratified into valvular, subvalvular, and supravalvular etiologies. So, the valvular etiologies can uh, have something to do with congenital malformations in the way of a unicuspid or bicuspid aortic valve, can be calcification in which there's degenerative or senile variants, atherosclerosis, Paget's disease, chronic renal failure. Infections can cause it the likes of rheumatic fever and chlam chlamydia pneumonia. And as well as rheumatoid arthritis, subvalvular causes uh, involve discrete lesions like a membranous diaphragm or a fibromuscular ring, and obstructive issues like hokum. Supervalvular issues include localized or discrete narrowing of the ascending aorta, something we term uh, Williams uh, syndrome. And we can also have low gradient aortic stenosis resulting from low cardiac output. So what are the complications of aortic stenosis? So B stands for bleeding, especially the combination of angiodysplasia with aortic stenosis and acquired von Willebrand disease type 2A. So those three entities constitute something we call Hades syndrome. Good association to note. Endocarditis as well can complicate aortic stenosis as well as embolic events being cerebral or systemic. Physical findings of aortic stenosis, as we know, the patient will be tachypneic, there's a decreased pulse pressure, there's brachioradial delay, pulses parvus et tardis, which refers to a slow rise and a low amplitude in the pulse, apical carotid um, delay, hyperdynamic apical beats, systolic thrill at the base of the heart, a narrowly split or paradoxical splitting of the second heart sound, or even sometimes an absent second heart sound, a harsh mid-systolic ejection murmur with radiation through to the carotids, and something we call the Gallivardin phenomenon, in which the aortic stenosis murmur you know, is usually harsh and um, loudest over the right upper sternal border, whereas in Gallivardin murmur it is musical and may be heard over the apex. This is due to radiation of the high-frequency components of the aortic stenosis murmur through to the apex. Okay, so when we prognosticate aortic stenosis, we look for, oh, sorry about that, three primary features, angina, syncope, and heart failure. All right, so if the patient has angina, that portends a 50% mortality at five years. If they have syncope, that portends a 50% a mortality in three years. And if they have concomitant heart failure, that portends 50% mortality through in two years. All right, and um, how do we manage aortic stenosis? So for mild or moderate aortic stenosis, you just got to follow them clinically with echo every three to five years for mild or every one to two years for moderate or severe, and sorry, and every year for severe. But if it's severe or symptomatic AS, then aortic valve replacement is the way to do it, and we can do it via transcatheter approach or surgical. Uh, notably, balloon valvuloplasty offers no survival benefit and is often only a temporizing measure until surgical or percutaneous aortic valve replacement can be performed. Vasodilators must use with caution in the setting of hypertension or heart failure. ACE inhibitors actually prefer over beta blockers because of the risk of reduced inotropy with the beta brigade. You want to start low and titrate the dose slowly because of the risk of hypotension and syncope. All right, uh, class one recommended indications of aortic valve replacement is if you have severe AS with symptoms of heart failure, syncope, exertional dyspnea, like we said, ASH, ASH, right, um, or pre-syncope by history or an exercise testing, uh, or if you have asymptomatic severe AS and a left ventricular ejection fraction below 50%, or severe AS and undergoing cardiac surgery for other uh, reasons. All right, and of course we said surgical versus tra transcatheter valve. The transcatheter aortic valve or TAVR uh, transcatheter aortic valve replacement should be considered for patients with an indication for aortic valve replacement who have high or prohibitive surgical risk for surgical AV, uh, aortic valve replacement. A multidisciplinary heart valve team should collaborate 
in the decision-making process. And of course, there's the decision between mechanical or bioprosthetic valve. So compared to human tissue valves, mechanical valves have prolonged durability, but higher chance of thromboembolism and bleeding from chronic anticoagulation. Overall, long-term outcomes are better with a mechanical valve. Main indication for a bioprosthetic valve include patients who could not or will not tolerate warfarin, or for those in whom compliance is uncertain, particularly those elderly folks above 65 years of age who do not have risk factors for thromboembolism and women of childbearing age. So there you have it, guys. Aortic stenosis, complications being bleeding in the way of Hades syndrome, endocarditis and embolic events, and prognostication for 50% mortality in five years if the patient has angina, in three years if the patient has syncope, in two years if the patient has concomitant heart failure. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Guard your heart with all diligence. I'll see you tomorrow with another mnemonic.